Hi, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. This is Natasha. I'm usually presenting yoga videos to you, but today I'm going to recommend some books that are related to wellness. These are books that I have read in the past, um, some books that I still use today or have just read recently, or I refer to on occasion, or I still recommend to others. So I think there's something here for everyone, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing my book recommendations with you today. This first recommendation is Mark Bittman's Quick and Easy Recipes from the New York Times. It features 350 recipes, which have all been featured in um, the New York Times, where he used to be a food editor. I followed him for quite a few years and um, have bought his a few of his cookbooks, actually, and they're sitting on my shelf at home now in the kitchen. They're, um, this one in particular is truly quick and easy. It's uh, very much no frills, not a lot of pictures, and I highly recommend all of his cookbooks. The other one that I own is, I believe it's called the Everything Cookbook. There's one for vegans, one for veg vegetarians. Um, he really has a really nice collection of um, cookbooks. My favorite recipe from this particular book is Curry in a Hurry. I like it because it's simply, um, it's simple, but it is really a very quick recipe and could easily be adapted for those who are vegan. So you, um, the recipe calls for chicken, but you could easily incorporate tofu or chickpeas or even sweet potatoes into that and still have a really delicious meal. This book is available in library and on the e-library. Quick and easy recipes by Mark Bittman. This next recommendation is Eating Animals by Jonathan Saffron Fuller. Um, I read this probably about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. And it was um, after watching a documentary on how meats were processed that I picked this up because I started to really um, question, you know, what I was eating basically. So it was sort of my first dabble into uh, vegetarianism, veganism. And I think it's a really good start for those who are questioning their diet and um, spe specifically the consumption of meat. Um, it answers a lot of questions about um, and unknowns about what we eat, what we eat it is a bit of uh, investigative reporting. Um, it's well researched, but it's also a bit of a memoir as well. And this is available in library. And again, it's Eating Animals by Jonathan Saffron Fuller. This next recommendation is Big Magic Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert. And this book I read about three years ago. It gives very encouraging advice. If you're someone who lives with self-doubt, this book will help you sort of reevaluate yourself, your thinking, and I think inspire you to seek that creative side that you know is there. Um, we each have a creative spark within us and only we have the power to sort of light that creativity that's within us. So if you're you're questioning your creative side and you want to sort of light that fire, this might be a good start for that to kind of um, break down those fears that you may have um, with exploring that creative side of yours that you know is there. So again, this is Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert. It's available in library and on the e-library. This next recommendation, Everybody Yoga, Let Go of Fear, Get on the Mat, Love Your Body by Jessamine Stanley, presents a very simple message that yoga is for everyone, every body. It doesn't matter your shape, your size, whatever form you take. It is a book of inspiration, but it's also a how-to book because it does present some, um, basic yoga poses and uh, yoga sequences that you can follow. Definitely for beginners, for those that are intermediate, and I think those advanced would also take something away from reading this book, her story and how she got into to yoga. And for those who aren't familiar with Jessamine Stanley, she actually started out on Instagram um, posting her her yoga poses and that's kind of launched her into I guess what you want to call yoga fame today because um, she was one of the first to really just sort of um, present yoga in um, in a different way she didn't look like what we all see on Instagram and other social media even today she presented a different body a different um, person than what we associate 
normally with yoga. And I loved that because I'm a very big believer that yoga is for everybody. It's not about achieving a certain pose or being flexible or looking a certain way. It really is for everybody and it will look different for everybody, but it's about what's achieved for the individual, both um, physically and uh, mentally. So again, everybody yoga, let go of fear, get on the mat, love your body by Jessamine Stanley. It's available in library. This next recommendation I decided to include in this list of wellness book recommendations because I know there's a lot of people out there dealing with alcoholism, um, addiction, recovery, and hearing or reading about Sean McCann's story um, I think will help in some small way or perhaps even a bigger way. This book is unique in that it gives um, two perspectives. It gives Andrea's perspective and what she went through, what she saw, what she felt, um, and her dealing with the addiction and the recovery process um, from a loved one's perspective. And then, of course, we also hear from Sean McCann himself and um, his, again, his addiction, his recovery, um, and how he basically came through the darkest periods of his life, stronger and better. And this is um, inspiring and very raw and honest. And I think that's what I appreciated it about it the most. This is One Good Reason, a memoir of addiction and recovery, music and love by Sean McCann and Andrea Arion. This is available in library soon, and it is already available on the e-library. So this next one is actually a few years old, published several years ago. It's called 10% Happier, How I Tamed the Voice in My Head, Reduced Stress Without Losing My Edge, and Found Self-Help That Actually Works, a true story by Dan Harris. So some of us may recognize that name, Dan Harris, from ABC Good Morning America. Um, he's on the weekend edition, and he's been a journalist for ABC for many years now. Um, this is a very quick read. It's about the power of meditation. And Dan Harris was a skeptic who became a believer in meditation and its effects and how much it helped him not only through his career, but also his personal life. And um, I love true stories. I love when people write about their own lives and that I can learn something from that. And that um, I think that's really brave for them to be able to present that to people and because it's often a very personal thing. Um, but when they can share their inspiration with others, I'm always happy to read um, those kind of books. So again, a very quick read, and this is available in library and on the e-library. So this next recommendation is also about meditation. It's called Sitting Still Like a Frog, Mindfulness Exercises for Kids and Their Parents. It's by Aline Snell presented in an easy to follow format, has easily accessible exercises. I suggest you start with one simple exercise, practice that, and then add on to it. I personally recommended this to <clears throat> many teachers and many parents um, of kids all ages, including teens, and it is available in library. I have personally used this in a classroom setting in where I knew the students were facing daily struggles at home and at school, whether it was with test anxiety, peer pressure, and it's always interesting to see how they respond to the exercises um, because they're so easy to follow and can easily be incorporated into their daily routine. So again, sitting still like a frog, mindfulness exercises for kids and their parents really great recommendation. I highly recommend that a family incorporate some of these exercises into their daily or weekly routines. And my last recommendation is also for kids. It's a beautiful illustrated, beautifully illustrated book um, by Tom Percival and it's called Ruby Finds a Worry. Um, this delivers a simple message the importance of talking about worries and fears and shows kids that they're never alone in their worries. And what I love about this book is that it encourages kids to talk. Talk about their fears, 
their worries, what's bothering them, and making sure that um, they know that it's okay to talk about things. Often kids will stay quiet because perhaps they don't want to further worry mom and dad um, or make them worry or cause any kind of stress whatsoever. Kids are very attuned to what's going on in the household and they can feel the stress. They know when they're stressed. So sometimes they won't speak up about their own worries and stress because they don't want to add to that. So I love how this book presents the conversation of anxiety. And I think it's a great conversation to have as a family, um, as a parent of a child you may have who does um, deal with anxiety on a daily basis. This is Ruby Finds a Worry, Words and Pictures by Tom Percival. Again, available in library and on the e-library.